Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Test postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 392. I had the uh, black pieces and my opponent played um, d4. I go with d5 and we get into the slob defense after he plays c4, the main move. I play c6. You see actually in this database the slob defense is the top choice. Uh, top Other top moves of course are e6, the normal queen's gambit declined or taking, and various other ways to play, <laughs> uh, which are not as good. Uh, let's see. So knight c3, we're developing our pieces. Knight f6. Um, you know, I, I uh, didn't think about it. I could have played the win hour gambit here since he uh, since he played the uh, knight to c3 first. But I just played a normal slob this time. I played that gambit plenty, so you've seen it if you've watched this channel for a while. Um, he goes knight f3, and I go e6. So we get a, a very normal position. If he had uh, brought the knight out first to... Uh, f3, then uh, we would have gotten into this same position. So he goes with e3, which is actually, this is the way I play the slob. I, well, I bring this knight out first, then this knight, and then I play e3 to defend the uh, c-pawn. So uh, uh, I go with knight bd7, the top choice, and then uh, the main move here is bishop d3, and this is uh, known as the Moran variation. I was referring to this in the video, so let's go ahead and put it on the board. The bishop comes out here, um, I like this to play for both sides. I play it as both black and as white. Um, leads to interesting and complicated positions. So you take the pawn, so you gain a tempo on the bishop, and then you play b5, kicking the bishop. And normally it just goes back to um, here. And then um, you can play with either bishop b7 or a6. But similar to the game, the idea with a6, you eventually want to play that move, is to support the move um, c5. So a6 defends the b-pawn, which is under attack from the knight. So then the, the c-pawn is free to move forward. And with this pawn move forward, uh, some exchanges in the center, uh, you get a nice diagonal for your bishop. Uh, but, of course, white uh, doesn't have to allow this uh, so easily. He can push on immediately with e4, and we get into this uh, very complicated position where uh, he can... Uh, push on with e5 or d5. I guess taking is not so good here, but uh, anyway, the tactical complications continue from this point, but it leads to interesting and in double-edged positions with play for both sides. So uh, so I kind of like the Moran variation. What my opponent played here was um, a3. It's kind of an interesting idea. If you uh, remember the variation we looked at, the bishop now has a, a new retreat square. So I went ahead. I didn't take right away. I developed my uh, bishop here. And then he went bishop d3. And that's the idea, is you delay taking the c-pawn until after the bishop has moved. And I could ignore it and just castle, but uh, I, I go for the familiar pattern. So he took, and uh, well, we're just out of the opening book here. Um, I could castle once again, but I'm playing this, this kind of Moran-style setup. And uh, he drops back to a2. Um, it looks like if he had gone to uh, d3, like in a normal Moran, he would have a, a decent advantage here. Okay, uh, but uh, we get a game that's about even. So now I, I castle finally. And uh, bishop to d2, a6, supporting the pawn so that I can push on with uh, c5. He has rook c1, and I go with c5 immediately. He hasn't really done anything to stop it. He could have tried if we back up. One of the ideas white can try sometimes is a move b4 just to clamp down and make sure I'm never pushing this uh, this pawn forward. It looks like in this case it's not such a great move. I can undermine after b4. I can undermine with a5. Um, e4 is probably yeah, the way to play this. Going for that uh, control the center and keeping in mind both options. There's e5 to fork these two pieces and there's a d5 to bust up the center. Um, although maybe he's a little reluctant to play that uh, until after he's castled. Anyway, uh, in this position he played rook c1. And that lets me play c5, and I get a, a very comfortable position out of this. He goes with uh, b3, and uh, oh, it looks like I should exchange here. I decide to leave it there and just develop my bishop. Well, that's still a good move. And he takes. And um, so I come out of the opening with an edge. My opponent uh, castles here, and I go rook c8. So normal developing moves, bishop back to b1. He's repositioning his bishop along this diagonal. He could set up a battery with the queen and threaten mate. He just needs to get rid of this uh, knight here that's defending the uh, h7 square. Um, I'm not too worried about that just yet. He goes queen c2, setting up the battery. 
Um, I go knight c to e4. I thought this was an interesting move. It uh, blocks that diagonal and threatens to uh, take some pieces here on the c file. So what did he play? He played queen to b2. So he has the option of trading off this knight. And now bishop takes a3 is <laughs> an interesting way to play. You know, I had the feeling there might be some kind of tactic here. And I just did not spot it in the game. Yeah, bishop takes a3 looks very good. So that's just um, <clears throat> just simply skewering the queen and the rook. And uh, there's not time to take my knight here. So uh, that, would, that would give me quite the edge. Um, I played uh, another developing move, rook fd8. Didn't, didn't spot the tactic. And now uh, he goes knight d4. Yeah, I still have this tactic. So it sat there for a while. That's a shame. <laughs> shame I didn't play that. Okay, uh, I went... Um, he went... Oh yeah, it's my move. I went queen d7 here. Guess I was uh, lining up on this file. I saw some tactics along this file, but uh, they're not quite working or not quite as forceful. He goes bishop to e1, dropping off of that. And now knight takes c3. Well, I get I get some kind of edge out of this position. Bishop takes. And uh, bishop to e4. So shutting down this diagonal and uh, trying to get rid of those mate threats. Um, he played knight to c2. And now bishop takes g2 as possible. This is interesting. <laughs> Bishop takes g2, king takes g2. What's the idea? And queen c6 check. Ah, that's a nice tactic. Bishop takes, king takes, queen c6 check. It's a double attack because I've got uh, two pieces, sorry, two pieces lined up, not on the knight, but but on the bishop. Two pieces lined up on the bishop as well as uh, the uh, attacking the king. So it's a fork and he's going to have to give a piece back and I've uh, so we end up with even uh, pieces, and uh, I've disrupted his king side and won a pawn over here. So another nice way to win. <laughs> okay, well, missed opportunities in this game. Bishop to g6, I just retreated my bishop back, and uh, he played f3. Yeah, I was, I was sort of provoking this weakness and thinking I, I could go after the pawns here. I go bishop to c5, opening up this uh, file here. He goes king h1, also pinning pinning that pawn. So he moves his king away so he's free to move it. And now um, bishop takes c2 is good. Um, I played knight to d5. Right here? Yeah, knight to d5. Yeah, so I played this without uh, recognizing there was this uh, tactic. Bishop takes g7. So um, I guess I can go ahead and put bishop takes g7 on the board too. Um, it actually turns out, if you see the evaluation, I'm still doing fine here, but I have to find the correct defense. And I play the first move correctly. So uh, what I do is I play knight e3. I'm not going to put this move on the board just yet. And he replied with bishop to h6. So after knight takes e3, bishop h6, he's threatening checkmate on uh, g7 there. So let's erase that arrow. So if you can imagine the knight on this square and the bishop on this square, and it's my turn to move. What's the best defensive move in that position? Because if you can find the, uh, the right defense there, then you can hold the game and maybe keep that uh, advantage, um, which I didn't find. So uh, if you want to think about that, pause the video here. Okay, um, I played knight takes e3, which is correct. And uh, he didn't take back. He played bishop h6. And now uh, I didn't see any other way to uh, shut this down than bishop to d4, which is uh, just a losing move. I mean, it blocks the diagonal, but it uh, gives up material. So uh, the move I missed, which is pretty simple, if I had taken the time to look for it, you just have to look around for all those piece moves that uh, pawn moves that can guard this square. And knight back to uh, f5 defends um, g7. They do say that backward moves are, are the hardest moves to find. And uh, I, I know I stared at this position for a while during the game and didn't find it. So interesting. Okay, so I played bishop d4, and now uh, a game where I had the edge and missed some winning chances, but I still had the edge all along. But now it's just losing. He takes my bishop. I take. He takes. And uh, this is the point. I thought I had a defense, 
but I can't actually take his queen <laughs> because he has a back rank mate here. Uh, it's checkmate. In fact, there's mate in five no matter what I do at this point. So after uh, that, that's the point where I resign. But right here, after uh, bishop d4, knight takes d4, I can't even take back. I just have to give up the material and uh, play something else. Knight takes f1 is my best try here. So queen takes, queen takes, yeah, and I miss the back rank threat. So uh, interesting, uh, nice tactical game. Some some interesting uh, tactical motifs there. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.